The president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, can attest that although he never ran from danger, he certainly doesn't take his security lightly, and as a result, he is currently one of the most heavily guarded individuals on the planet. Despite this, there have been numerous attempts on Putin's life, and his survival of this record number of attacks is a testament to the professionalism and readiness of everyone involved in the president's security. For Putin, surviving an assassination attempt has become a biannual tradition. Therefore, it seems sense that his security detail and tactics are so effective, they have had extensive training in real-world scenarios. Fortunately for the president, none of these efforts were even close to being successful. At least some of the jobs were completed really professionally, though, and as soon as Putin assumed the presidency in 1999, the Russian mafia set their sights on him. In 2000, a group of militants planned to assassinate Putin during his visit to Uzbekistan. The plot was uncovered, leading to the arrest of the conspirators before any harm could be done. It was a sort of preliminary strike as Putin cracked down on organized crime and stood firm in his determination to uproot it. However, an elaborate car bombing plot was foiled and the culprits were caught and sent to jail or hell, whichever was closer. In 2002, while Putin was scheduled to have breakfast at a hotel in Yalta, a plot involving poison in jam was discovered. The incident occurred during Putin's visit to the Russian province during a visit to Chechnya. The president survived the attack, but several of his security personnel were injured. The same year, during a parade in Moscow's Red Square, snipers were stationed with a plan to target Putin. However, the FSO quickly learned of the situation and stopped the plan's implementation. This revelation allowed for prompt intervention and the prevention of a poisoning attempt. In 2002, the Russian president managed to elude yet another attempt at his life. This time, it was in Azerbaijan, where an Iraqi man with ties to the Chechen rebels organized the assassination attempt. Abraham put an end to the man, and he was later sentenced to 10 years in prison. Later that year, Another man attempted to kill Putin by planning an explosion that he planned to drive along a motorway. When the FSO learned of this plan, they diverted the president's vehicle and removed the 40 kilo device that was placed next to the Kremlin. The danger Putin was once again the target of an assassination plot in 2003, this time on British soil. The British anti-terror police arrested two men who were planning to kill Putin while he was in London. It appears that the Russian secret services learned of the plot and changed their colleagues in the United Kingdom. A year later, while Putin was visiting a foreign nation, Russian security services uncovered a conspiracy to poison his food. The incident's precise location and circumstances were kept under wraps, but it appears that Putin is either immortal or his food tasters were competent for the job. Assassination attempts persisted over the years, with one more emerging as a significant new sensation in 2012, when Ukrainian officials apprehended a group of people plotting to kill Putin while he was visiting the nation. The specifics of the plot and how it was supposed to be carried out were kept a secret from the public. But shortly after the Maidan began, so I'll leave the rest to theorists speculating from a distance, it would appear as though Vladimir Putin is constantly on the go with a rabbit foot, a four-leaf clover, and a dozen other lucky charms. But the president's ability to withstand assassination attempts has nothing to do with luck. Rather, it is the result of the Federal Protective Service's painstaking work and the efforts of everyone involved in Putin's protection. And speaking of security teams, the FSO is unquestionably the greatest in the world. The FSO, the service for the protection of the nation, is a formidable organization with strong roots in the KGB. 
the well-known Soviet intelligence agency that was founded following the collapse of the Soviet Union. Over the years, FSO has taken on the duty of defending senior government officials, securing vital government infrastructure, and preserving classified information. The Federal Security Organization, FSO, has broadened its domain by incorporating multiple government agencies into its jurisdiction. This consolidation has provided the FSO with substantial authority over the allocation of the Russian budget, enabling them to distribute funds as they deem appropriate. Consequently, the agency has gained recognition for its capacity to synchronize financial resources with its goals, as Viktor Zolotov, the head of the FSO, is a complicated and contentious man. Unlike other close associates of Vladimir Putin, Zolotov is not a billionaire. In fact, he barely makes ends meet with $40 million, which is absurd given how frequently he must work to protect the president. Interestingly, Zolotov has almost no assets in the West, which is lucky for him as in 2019 he was sanctioned due to multiple gruesome human rights. The Federal Security Organization, FSO, is a formidable force to be reckoned with, but they are not the only ones watching out for Putin's safety. Violations through the assets of its leader are somewhat known. The FSO keeps its budget and spending secret, although specific figures are difficult to come by. Reports indicate that the FSO commands a substantial annual budget potentially amounting to several billion rules additionally. Putin acts as a KGB agent in his own army. In order to counter the agency's growing power, Vladimir Putin can rely on one extremely powerful force, the National Guard, which the president himself established in 2016. Putin is well aware that plots against his life typically originate from within, so the president prudently never puts all of his eggs in one basket. This unit currently has over 34,000 soldiers, all of whom report directly to Putin. Putin's private army requires significant financial support from Russian taxpayers. Current estimates place the annual maintenance cost of this vast force at about 200 billion rubles, or roughly 2.7 billion US dollars. This is a small price to pay to avoid any military coup ideas, but this formidable force is not responsible for stopping assassination attempts or preserving the president's life. Rather, their job is to appear menacing and prevent any powerful figure, military or not, from believing they can gain the upper hand by having some soldiers behind their backs. Even the chief of the fearsome Wagner PMC, Evgeny Prikozhin, is aware that opposing Putin will result in failure and total loss. The president's security service is the only organization that genuinely ducks bullets and blends in with the crowd to safeguard the president. In conclusion, Vladimir Putin's remarkable resilience against 43 assassination attempts underscores the complex and enduring nature of political dynamics. His ability to navigate such threats reflects a combination of strategic acumen, state apparatus support, and a resilient character that has defined his tenure in Russian politics. The ongoing saga of survival adds a layer of intrigue to the intricate tapestry of Putin's leadership, leaving us to ponder the intricacies of power and survival in the realm of international politics. This is the end of today's video. Remember to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Thank you.